<laughs> but it's like it's a medium slide. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> I'm Bobby Roundtree for a medium, and this is my very special friend. I'm Erin Lee of HeavenlyMessenger.com. Yay! <laughs> And we're here when psychics and mediums collide again. Huzzah! Woo! <laughs> Today, we are going to talk about body code. Body code. Body code. So, body code is an energy healing modality. It's where we connect with the subconscious, where, which is fully and completely aware of everything that is happening in your body, in your life, of everything that you've experienced up until this point, and everything that you brought with you into this life. So, that might be inherited trapped emotions or other things that you may have brought with you into your life. And what we do is we connect with your uh, subconscious and we ask what your body is ready to release to let go of and what it needs to do in order to come into health balance and well-being so mm -hmm. is that just things that happen in prior lives or can you screw things up in this life that have to get undone yes okay <laughs> so both yes yes to both so this may be so for example um you might have something that's going on in your life and you might have something that's called a trapped emotion. Mm -hmm. So emotions are energies that can become trapped in our body. And what it does is it primes us to continue to experience that emotion. Because when your subconscious is presented with a new situation mm -hmm. and it asks, how am I going to react to this? If frustration or anger is sitting there in your energy field, subconscious says, cool, we know this, that's how we're going to react. So if you find that you have continuous um, experiences where you're constantly experiencing the same emotion or the same types of patterns, it could be because you have a trapped emotion. Oh. And emotions can become trapped in lots of different ways. Um, they can be inherited. So for example, your biological mother or father may have had a trapped emotion that in addition to the color of your hair they shared with you, they shared the trapped emotion with you too. Blame your parents. <laughs> that is the moral of this video. Blame your parents. <laughs> Thank no. you for coming. Namaste. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm a parent. Yeah. No, uh, blame your parents. It's not my fault. The moment when psychics and mediums collide became awkward. <laughs> Call my kids. Are you hurting? Yeah, that's right. Did I do this to you? Maybe. So this could be, okay, so uh, uh, can, uh, can we use me as an example? And then I yeah. can, okay, so for my stomach thing. Yeah. Because my body doesn't let me eat all the food I want it to eat. Yep. Or that I feel it should eat mm -hmm. or could eat. Mm -hmm. So that could be something from a prior life rather than something now. I've always thought of it was something now. It could, it could be from, it could be something that you've inherited. Because that's my reference point is yeah. now. Yeah. Is the Bobby time. It could be now. It could have been something that has accumulated over time from early in your life. Mm -hmm. It could be like a whole pile of trapped emotions. It could be other things as well. And that's super, one of the super cool things about the body code, because we look at so many different aspects in our lives. We look at things on an energetic level. We look at toxins and parasites. We look at um, nutrition and lifestyle, misalignments circuits and systems like we look at the entire body we look at all of the energetics in the body it is huge which is the way actually we're supposed to be I don't want to say medicating ourselves incorrect but healing ourselves through looking at how we feel as well as how we feel yes absolutely yes because I've shared with my doctor what I think about this and yeah. that was a bit of a mistake a That's, bit of a mistake when I told her it has to do, I think, maybe with my psychic energy. And she went, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that can be a tricky one to discuss yeah, with some I people. I think there's like a little thing on my chart. It says, see, today you look crazy. Because <laughs> I, it's in my solar plexus chakra. Yep. So to me, it has to do with my power. Mm -hmm. And it actually hits me in the brain with power. Right. Because what bothers me is when I get, to, <laughs> it's the worst, when you have a meal that's really yummy. Yeah. And you want to keep eating it, but your body will only allow you five bites. But there's ten bites on the plate, and it's really, really frustrating because I know I could do, I could possibly try to do the ten, and it, but now I'm... You're going to pay for it later. Really, really pay for it. It's not a stomach ache. Yeah. It is, ugh. It's like I ate a bowling ball. Four. And that even makes it sound funny, too. <laughs> But okay, yeah, but it's, it's like painful. painful. And I've had visions yep. while I'm in the pain mm -hmm. of myself as a prisoner being kicked by my jailers. 
Interesting. Yeah, being beaten and things like that. Huh. So you think that... You're, it oh, I was yeah. hoping that wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the things I think is really cool about Body Code is, I mean, we can explore what happened, but more often than not, just bringing the awareness to, to the conscious mind is enough to release it. Right? Because you're Cause subconscious. How do I release that? I don't even know if it's 100% a truth and or if it's a conjecture of like a pr an imprisonment yeah well so one of the things that's interesting is sometimes um dreams mm -hmm. can become trapped oh right so sometimes events that haven't happened but you have experienced them in a way that is really visceral that can become trapped so like watching a movie where somebody has experienced something if it's a really visceral experience for you it can become trapped Okay, yes. <laughs> so all my life, yeah. until I was like a teenager, I had this fear mm -hmm. of being chased in a maze mm -hmm. by a man with a limp and a hunchback. My goodness. <laughs> then I watched The Shining. Anyone who's seen The Shining just went, that's The Shining, Bobby. <laughs> it was. It's, it's Jack Nicholson chasing after his wife in the mm -hmm. maze in The Shining. I saw it again as a teenager. Went, oh my God, I must have seen this when I was five. Yeah. Because I have had that recurring nightmare since I was five. Yeah. And it just became oh, trapped. And then it was gone. I no longer have that nightmare. I no longer fear mazes. I no yeah. longer fear men chasing me with axes. Hell, I'm married to a fuller. <laughs> <laughs> I have really gotten over that fear. <laughs> You've really gotten over that fear. <laughs> okay. I digress, as I tend to do. Uh, so that's Needle Mosquito. Yeah. So because there. I deserve to have that trapped in my brain because I was a naughty kid. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that there's probably some question as to whether or not it was deserved. Well, maybe because I was thinking I was, I'm a naughty little monkey. And it attracted and that. And it attracted a bad energy to me. It very well could. Because it was me. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> it was me. I would already had a dead person talk to me that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, things can come from lots of different places, from lots of different experiences, oh, okay. and anything can cause anything. anything. So, because it can even be the slightest little thing it, that you didn't even realize. Uh, absolutely, and it can be something that was really inconsequential to you. So, for example, when it comes to trapped emotions, sometimes you have a really bad day, right? And like it starts first thing in the morning, and it's frustrating, and all throughout the day, and you're just in this really awful mood. Mm -hmm. Nothing in particular may have happened. It might not have been like a traumatic experience, but that is enough to trap an emotion. Wow. Yeah. And so then give you more of those days. It absolutely can. So mm -hmm. is that especially if you start to associate them with things and people? Uh, quite possibly. I notice sometimes when people have bad moods, they yeah. look around the room to try to figure out who gave them that bad mood. Right. They don't tend to look in the mirror and go, oh, yes. I'm being a little bit of a dumbass. Absolutely. And I'm making matters worse by being a dumbass and people are responding back in a dumbassy kind of way, yeah. which is creating more dumbassy Which is in just self-perpetuating. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a sea of negativity. Exactly. So the way that we approach it is first of all um, by connecting with your subconscious okay. checking to make sure that it's okay that we do some work we ask the subconscious what it wants to work on first and that's because uh, the things that we are experiencing in our body physically mentally emotionally and spiritually it's kind of like a tangled ball of yarn mm -hmm. and what we may think is the thing to pull might actually make things more difficult and so subconscious knows exactly how everything became tangled and how it needs to become untangled so we let subconscious drive us in that makes so much sense and to tell me. us where to go yes because that is one of the reasons i have not medicated myself mm -hmm. because i am nervous okay i'm afraid to cover up my symptoms yes because then i won't know what i'm dealing with absolutely because my symptoms tell me what the cause is because mm -hmm. the symptoms aren't the cause exactly and so often we treat the symptoms rather than the root cause that's all anybody ever wants to treat they want to stop yeah. the symptoms so you feel normal mm -hmm. but then the cause it's, gets to free reign in your body absolutely and it gets to make problems possibly somewhere else yeah and you're tougher so, than you think that's right you can take that shit absolutely so yeah so are you ready shall oh, we give it a try it's gonna be me i'm a guinea pig today Woo! okay so okay. what do i do uh you sit there and you look pretty hey <laughs> 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 And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to ground and center myself. 
Um, I like to work with God Source Universe and Angels, so I'm gonna call them in, ask them for help and support, and I'm just gonna get better with you. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna need all the help and support we can get. <laughs> okay, and and so I'm just. You might notice that I'm sitting here and I'm rubbing my fingers together. This is a form of muscle testing. So I'm acting as proxy for you, and okay. and I'm connecting with your subconscious. So I'm just going to ask, um, am I connected with Bobby now? Yes. And is it okay for us to do some body code with her today? We get it. Yes. So that's awesome. So before we started our video, um, I asked Bobby, you know, like what's coming up for her? What does she want to work on? And she said, like, I've got stuff going on with my neck and I've got stuff going on with my stomach. So we're going to see where subconscious wants to go and possibly subconscious is going to want to go somewhere else, but we're going to start with these places. So experiencing difficulty in certain places. <laughs> My subconscious is already ready. <laughs> already, it's already ready. It's, let me in on it. Let me in. <laughs> All right. So, are we going to start first with Bobby's neck? No, we we are going to go to stomach first, which I think kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, we're just going to my snazzy dazzy app. Oh, wow. So, I feel that. Do you? Yes, I do. Opening into the app. No, I, I feel you talking about it all and <laughs> talking about this with this and all that sort and of stuff. And it's going on. Yeah, That's really awesome because, you know, I have to admit I've done sessions for myself, but I haven't really done sessions for anybody else who's very connected in the way you are. So Whoa, this will be that's neat. really cool. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. I hope I don't explode. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. That sounds messy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> this is very serious work. Oh, okay. Me. <laughs> I can't. I'm doing a serious face. So I'm just going to I'm just going to give you an introduction. You probably can't see my my phone and my app too well, but basically it's broken into six categories: three on one side, three on the other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be asking to refine, and then once we get one, then we go on to the next menu and we refine from there as well. So if you're like, what the heck is she doing? That's what I'm doing. That's what she's doing. All right, so we're connecting. We're connected with Bobby. We're asking, you know, what we're going to do about her stomach. Um, are we starting with something that's on the left? And I get a yes. Is it an energy? Is it a circular system? No, it's actually a toxin. Toxin on the left. It's on the right. Is it heavy metal, excess, electromagnetic radiation? No, we've got something environmental coming up. Is it on the left? It is. Is it cosmetic, a cleaning product? No, it's pollution. So, I mean, it's a good thing we live in a world where there isn't a lot of pollution. <laughs> So is this um, a pollution that's on the left? It is. Is it an air pollution? No, it's a plastics pollution. So <clears throat> many plastics are toxic to the body and disrupt essential systems, hormones, and rhythms. Microplastics, as an example, are small pieces of plastic that pollute the environment and are toxic to all life. These small fragments are ubiquitous and have often been found in water, food, and in the air. So toxins may be from any time or point in your life. They can exist in physical form as well as in an in invisible energetic form. So energetic toxins are vibrational frequencies that were simply unable to be processed, likely because the energy of the body was unbalanced. So what we're going to do is first we're going to ask, is this a physical toxin that's still present physically in your body? And I get a no. So it, it, it is something that's energetic. So your body was able to eliminate it on a physical level, but energetically it's still kind of hanging out. So I'm just going to ask, do we need to know anything more about this? And we do. So um, I'm just going to ask where in the body is this? Is this in a circuit or system? We do have that. So are we on the left? No, we're on the right. Is this in an organ, a gland? No, this is actually in the energy body, which makes sense because it is itself an energy. Is it in an energy body on the left? Yes. Is it in the spirit body? No, it's hanging out in your aura. So do we need to know more about where it is hanging out in the aura? No. So we can just clear it from your aura. Um, before we do that, we're going to ask if we have any associated imbalances with this. No. So we're going to let it go. Are you okay. ready? Okay. Okay. All right. So we've identified that there was, um, is an energetic plastics toxin that's in your aura and we're going to release it and we're going to let it go. So when we say energetic plastics toxin, are we using like plastic as in like the actual thing? Oh, really? So yeah. So what can happen is like tox uh, plastics can leach into our food or into oh, different yeah. things that we've consumed. Yeah. And so when we talk about it as an energetic, what we're saying is the body has been able to physically eliminate it, but there's some aspect of the energy that is left over. Oh. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, you know when you close your eyes and you're not actually seeing the light anymore, but you close your eyes and there's a bit of that, like, reflection of the light that's yeah, still but left? See it. Yeah, but Yeah. <laughs> We've got a really We're bright looking at the light, light here. <laughs> <laughs> So what you're seeing is not actually the light itself. You're seeing the what's left over in your in your eye oh, from what you were there because my body experienced it exactly. Yeah. But it hasn't. Your body hasn't had a chance to clear that yet. Yeah, because right? it actually isn't that something about the cones like the you and your eyes closed that still sees the light because you actually see like all the way into all your body. Exactly. That's some science I I heard about. <laughs> I'm really impressed by your Thank science. Thank you very much. I think that was grade ten. <laughs> That's awesome. So this is just a super like <laughs> basic example. Oh yeah, basic. <laughs> so so that's basically what the energetics of it is. It's the energetic fingerprint or footprint of it, but the physical has already been ex ex left your body. Okay, so yeah. on that, yeah, on my left side, yeah, I have a little lump. Mm -hmm. I've got my stomach here, and I've got my little lump You've here. got a little lump. Yeah, and it could the little lump be a physical ramification to indicate that to me? Anything can be anything. So okay. through Body Code, we're not able to offer any sort of, pardon me, diagno uh, diagnosis. So what Neither we can do, doctor, so yeah. worry. <laughs> but what we can do is we can we can release things that aren't helping your body that will give you a better chance to come into balance. It in may body. help to start the healing process. Exactly, exactly. Okay, when we do body code stuff, basically what we're doing is we're giving your body the tools and the resources that it needs in order to bring itself back into balance and back into alignment. Your subconscious is saying, hey, we've got this thing over here. It is detrimental to us. Let's get rid of it. And body code says, sure, let's get rid of it. And your body says, cool, look at what I can do now. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me not get rid of it. <laughs> we'll have to work on belief that's systems what my body too. Says. No, but that's what my body says. My body's like, oh, yeah? Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Hold my beer. That's Hold my, my beer. Body says. Okay. Shall we shall we release yeah. your okay. okay, what so do I do? You're going to sit there, you're okay. going to breathe and you're going to relax. Okay. And we're setting the intention to release any sort of energetic imbalance that is residual in your body physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and in your aura connected to plastics. And when you're ready, I'm gonna ask you to take a full breath in. And out. <sighs> You can do whatever. Okay. Yeah. And another full breath in. And out. And one more full breath in. And out. Sorry, you like a yoga teacher? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have to, I just want to pause here for a second. <laughs> Usually when I lead people through the, the breathing practices, they are not yoga teachers. <laughs> and the breathing only takes Plus, a fraction of the time. I had to shorten it. I know you did. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no apology necessary. That's a good breath in. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to ask, are we still working with Bobby's stomach SVR? So are we working with something on the left? This, this is an energy. Is this an energy on the left, on the right? Ooh, no. Uh, is this allergy or intolerance? No, this is emotional. We've got some trapped emotions. Um, so the, the first step to body code is actually called emotion code. And in emotion code, we deal strictly with trapped emotions. So it's really I, a lot of fun for me <laughs> to go back into emotions. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, so we're just going to ask, um, are we dealing, we're just dealing with a regular old trapped emotion. Is this on the left side? No, it's on the right. So is this a common trapped emotion, shared trapped emotion? This is an absorbed trapped emotion. So this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I believe that people who are empathic are at a greater risk for absorbing emotion from other people. So when people are experiencing big emotion, it's easier to trap it. Um, especially if we have any sort of predispos predisposition to experiencing it in a bigger way. So, or a mommy. <laughs> yes, or a mommy, absolutely. 
So we're gonna see which which motion this is that has been absorbed. Is it? It's in column A. It's in an odd row. Not in row one. Not in row. So we're in row five. Is it blaming dread? No. Actually, we've got fear that's coming up as the trapped emotion. So I like to actually go into <laughs> the definition of fear. Of fear. Well, because some of them fear's huge. Some of them people don't really know what the definition of the emotion is, and so like this is specifically what we're working with a strongly distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, or pain. The threat may be real or imagined. And I think that's another significant part is that this might not be something that is like physically threatening you in your space. It could be something that you're afraid of that is um, in a dream, is a possibility for something. So yes, this can be, this can come from many different places. Right. <laughs> so, so let's ask, do we need to know more about this? We do. So is this something that became trapped before the age of 25? Um, no. Is this something that became trapped before the age of 30? No. Is this something that became trapped before the age of 35? I get yes. So is this 34, 33? I've got about age 33 mm. popping up for you. So when we do muscle testing and we look at ages, um, it's not really precise. So it could actually be any time from 32 to 34. So in that age range. Nightmare Interesting. So that would be a, a potentially a time when fear would come up to mm -hmm. the forefront for yes, you. Yes, on a lot of different fronts. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And now this again was something that was absorbed. So this may not even have been your fear, but it may have been somebody the else's children's. fear. Likely. Yeah. So do we need to, we don't need to know more about this. So I suspect that you're right on with your understanding. Yeah, I knew it was them. Yeah, I just had the whole. Yeah, I knew it was them. <laughs> Those Nobody guys. has more emotional control over me than my children. Yeah. Period. Yeah. yeah like no, like, like I would kill you for them. <laughs> <laughs> said with all the love I don't in the care world. who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the love in the world. It is the love that a mama bear has. Absolutely. That I mean, person comes out of you and you were like, I will kill everyone for you. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. But I mean, like, don't piss off your sister because same thing applies for her. So that's yeah. when it gets awkward. Exactly. Yeah. It applies for every mama bear. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have kids, you apply that I will kill for you to the other people, mm -hmm. to other people. in your Because you don't have to have kids to feel that. You just have to feel love. And I actually didn't feel that love till I had them. Mm-hmm. When I had kids, I went, holy shit, this is big. Oh my God, <laughs> this person owns me. No one had ever right. owned me before. Everyone can like, hey, I think you'll leave it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I interrupted, I'm sorry. That is so Good. totally on the money. But yeah. Yeah, that's so weird that that would now, like why well, did it come up later? Because it was trapped. And then it came up because probably something else actually re-spurred it a little bit. Or it's just been sitting there and festering. Yeah. Yeah. What am I yeah. going to do now? What do I do now? Well, we're going to release it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to release right. it. Let's we're going to release it. Do we have any associated? We do have associated imbalances. So we've got more to release with this. Will I be able to eat pasta? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Be, I'm scared now. Now that's my fear. I look at food and go, <gasps> yeah. you're going to hurt me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Look at a bowl of macaroni and cheese going, no. Nah. Can't wait. used to be my favorite thing the whole wide world. Oh, it would be so awesome if you were able to eat macaroni and cheese again without any sort of oh, repercussions. Yeah. More than two bites. Maybe. We'll see. That would be bizarre. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So what else? So we have associated imbalance. Are we looking at something on the left? Yes. Is this uh, an energy? No. We've got a circular system. Is this on the left? On the right? Is this an organ? No. This isn't a gland. Is this uh, on the left? No. On the right? Is it a brain gland? No. It's another gland. On the left? Yes. Is it the thymus? The thyroid? No. We've got parathyroid coming up. Parathyroid? Yeah. Um, so let me just see here. We've got a whole pile of different things that can um, be common symptoms of imbalance in the parathyroid. Um, so there may be something going on there or it could also be that we just need to balance something. Okay, so, okay. so things of low function could be uh, low, low blood calcium levels, muscle spasms, especially in the hands and feet. Um, tetany, I'm not really sure if I've pronounced that properly. T-E-T-A-N-Y, tetany. I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll have to look it up after. I would assume that it's dizziness. Maybe. Well, that would be like 
tomatoes? Tomatoes, no, tomatoes is, is the, is is the, is the is, ear. Yeah. But you can get... Oh, uh, interesting. They're very dizzy with it. What's the other one that's actually dizziness? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> fatigue. <laughs> <Something funny. laughs> so fatigue, headaches, insomnia, tingling around the mouth or the extremities. So that's if function is low. And symptoms um, of hyperparathyroidism is, so like high function, um, kidney stones, gallstones, fatigue, nausea, bone pain, osteoporosis, elevated blood cal calcium level, and either high or low function can be ah, discomfort in the neck or shoulder, difficulty sleep sleeping, and muscle spasms. All right. So All right. we're just going to ask, do we, need, we don't need to know more about this, but we do have associated imbalance. So, so far we're releasing the absorbed trapped emotion of fear from the kids. Okay. We're, <laughs> we're, fault we're, kids. we're bringing the parathyroid back into balance. <laughs> and what else are we doing? Um, we are working with something on the left and it is an energy. It's an energy on the left. Is it post-traumatic offensive? No, it's mental. Is it mental on the left? Yes. Is it a will to a no will to No, We've got a broadcast message. Broadcast messages are so cool. So a broadcast message is where there is something in you that is broadcasting out to other people and it's basically telling them how to interact and engage with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like a radio frequency and it is done all subconsciously on your part. It's done subconsciously on their part. So for example, a broadcast message might be, um, don't treat me well. Oh, or treat me poorly. Uh, yes, I yeah. hate myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what I hate myself. Hate me too. Yeah, people do that all the time. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So They'll even do it with their actions, though, too. Mm -hmm. I don't really like myself. I want you to for sure not like me, and I want to be in control of that. So I'm going to be a dick first. Yeah, and yeah. perpetuate it. Yeah, so that you bad. can't be people a dick to me first. Yeah, because I started it, and so therefore I'm in control of it, and, and it's I not my fault because of me. It's my fault because of my actions. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't do that. Do I do that? Well, we're going to see oh, okay. what it is. <laughs> so we'll, we'll ask what the negative broadcast message is. Is it in column A? No, it's in column B. Is it an odd row? It is. Is it in row one? Or three? No, it's in row five. And is it I need to be rescued? I want to disappear. No one cares. No one respects me. People don't want me. Bobby, are you setting that up? No, I hope not. Well, let's make sure People we get rid of it. me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I can see, because okay, I'm sorry. I've always thought, well, I've had an inclination that this has to do somewhat as well with what I am. Right. That it's a little more severe with me because mm -hmm. everything's more severe. Because right. I'm supposed to know. Right. And it's funny because it's like what you said when I project what I tell people I actually project out something that tells people how to engage with each other right that's like all I do is try to tell people how to live their lives right and I don't want anyone coming in here <laughs> I want to tell you what to do, but don't you dare tell me what to do. So, so actually, this is a negative broadcast message, but it can also be part of what's a protection. Yeah. Oh, it's for total, you too. Yeah. Well, yeah. because part of it too, the respect thing. Mm -hmm. Because of what we do, mm -hmm. and because I've always been this way, and it's always been considered I'm a loon, mm -hmm. or I'm crazy. Or I actually call myself a weirdo, and I call my world my weirdo world. Yeah. And it is kind of derogatory. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of me saying, I'm going to call myself odd so that when you call me odd, I can say, yeah, I said it first. So yeah. suck it. Yeah. 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 So she and I used to only ever tell people what I was when I was intoxicated. Right. Because then I would tell them the things that were all around them in my drunken stupor. <laughs> and then I woke up. But still, I've always been this way. So Fantastic. is that possibly a little part of it? Because mm -hmm. I always think of it, because this is my solar plexus shock. That's your power. power. Absolutely. And this is my power. This is it what is. I was brought here to do. And it is, mm -hmm. it is in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Not like a, oh, you can move the power, I got a cape. But it's a power in that if I was, like, brilliant, if I was brilliant, because I'm not. If I was brilliant like one of my kids, <laughs> um, jealous. That's what I am. <laughs> um, if I was brilliant, then I'd be a brain surgeon. That would be my power that yeah. I'm bringing to people. Yeah. Or a philosopher. You know, we all have the thing we're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. So that could be that. So don't be... Yeah. Mad. It's yeah. Not about us. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're going to we're gonna let it go. Yeah. Well, okay. Does that feel okay for you to let this one go? Yeah. Yeah. 
It, Perfect. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Being able to let that go. Yeah, we're we're gonna let it go. So if I can't imagine being let that go, being able to let that go, will I be able to let that go? Because I can't imagine it with my conscious mind, or my subconscious, be able to go, shut up, Bobby, <laughs> throw me over. So what we're going to do is we're we're bypassing your conscious mind oh. to a to a small extent, and we're going to let it go. <laughs> so we're looking around. At people. <laughs> Yeah, what do, what do they have to say about all this? Oh, the friends and family. In there. <laughs> so we're gonna release this. Okay. And then if it if it comes back in, we can release it again. And each time it will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and until less and less and less. until your conscious believes it. Wow. Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna okay. see. Do we have? We don't have any more associated imbalances. So we're gonna start by releasing this um, radio uh, broadcast message. And the broadcast message was: People don't want me. Yeah, people don't want me. We're going to do some balancing in the hypothyroid. I feel bad for myself. In the parathyroid. Well, then we'll just give you some love. Okay. And we're going to release the absorbed half motion of fear. That makes some sense with some other stuff. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So we're going to start with the um, broadcast message. Okay. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. We'll do the, and we'll do the breathing all at the end. Oh, okay. So. okay. So, I like that you invite me to close my eyes, by the way. Oh, good. I would have like told you. I would have said, close your eyes. <laughs> all right. So when you're ready. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. All right. I fully and completely release the broadcast message. Um, people don't like me. I release this now and through all directions of space and time. This message no longer serves me. It no longer supports me. And it has no place in my life in my body, physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. And I tipped, we're gonna take a one full breath in. So when you're ready, full breath in. And out. Oh. I know you did. <laughs> um, and the next one, we are going to bring balance into your parathyroid, so I fully and completely balance my parathyroid physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and energetically in my body now. And through all directions of space and time, my parathyroid functions exactly as it needs to, and it helps to facilitate balance in all ways. I'm gonna do one breath for this one too. When you're ready, full breath in. Okay, and out. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the big guy. Okay. I fully and completely release the absorbed trapped emotions of fear I absorbed from my children. <laughs> I release them now and through all directions of space and time. This emotion no longer serves me and it no longer serves them. <clears throat> I fully and completely release it now and through all directions of space and time. And when you're ready, we're going to do three breaths on this one. So take a full breath in. And out. And another full breath in. And out. And one more full breath in. And out. And we're just going to take a moment here to breathe and balance <clears throat> to allow your body to come into this new equilibrium with everything that it has released with the things that have come back into balance and just allowing your body to sit in this place to adjust to become comfortable and to invite in new opportunities this is a bit of a fresh slate, a bit of a new beginning. And just breathe in that feeling of love and opportunity. When you're ready and in your own time, come back into awareness of your body Come back into awareness of the space around you. 
and in your own time, open your eyes. <laughs> Do you know what's funny? What? Because when you said release the fear from your kids, yeah. a little voice said, but how will we control what happens to them? <laughs> and then when my mind went, no, stupid. <laughs> This is what you do. You don't attach fear to control things. Oh my gosh. That's a pretty interesting belief system to yeah. come up. And that wasn't, that's not my belief system. Yeah. That is something that I would say, oh, you're having fear about your kids. And that's worse. That's mm -hmm. like, that's like worrying about something happening to your kids. I don't do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Probably because I don't want anything to happen to them. And that's fear right there. Exactly. Oh. I mean, in the same way that we can absorb trapped emotion and in the same way that we can inherit trapped emotion, we can also inherit and absorb belief systems too. Yes, like the societal belief system that you must be this certain way in order to, to, yes. or to be or whatever. Yeah. Yes, you, it can be programmed and it can be something that you don't choose. So with the subconscious, um, much of our subconscious is formed in those first five to seven years. Yes, I agree completely. The and first five years are so important. So critical. Golly, and yeah. those things that we establish at, the, at those times, like our subconscious doesn't necessarily grow the way that our conscious does. And so it goes back and it checks in with those things. So if you've got that thing that's sitting there, subconscious is like, well, yeah, that must be true. This has been here for all this time. And, and this is what we know to be true. And everybody else does it that way yeah. because it makes you a good mom to worry. Yeah. If you don't worry, you're not a good mom. That's right. Fudge. Mm -hmm. So the subconscious is an incredibly complex thing, but at the same time, it's also very simple too. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. They haven't come out with it yet, but the next <laughs> level of this is belief code. And ah. we work with beliefs. So I would so, would you like to be a guinea pig when I I'm would ready? love to be a guinea pig because I'm, I believe very, very, very strongly in the things that I hear in my head. Mm -hmm. There's no book written that I can go, oh, well, scripture says. Mm -hmm. I just say, I believe it to be true and therefore I think it is. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think there's a lot to be said for experience because of the experience that we've had, right? Because, you know, I, I connect with angels. I've had so many visceral experiences with angels with their benefit that, you know, whether or not you believe it to be true doesn't really make a difference. Do you ever waver no. yes. with stuff like this? Like, mm -hmm. I, okay, so if we were going to go, because I believe, could I, some of it I believe is them mm -hmm. indicating things to me so I'll pay attention. Yep. Could, is that part of the body code thingy too? Sorry, run that one by me again? Okay. Well, and that could be my self-loathing. Anyway, <laughs> the lumps that I have. Oh, yes, the lumps. The lumps are, because the lumps to me are an indicator of pay attention, pay attention, pay yep. attention. So is that a body coding thing or am I actually just putting a highfalutin ideology so I don't know that it's necessarily a body code thing, but I would absolutely agree with that as well. Okay, okay, right? okay good. Like right. when, when I look at emotion, for example, if you're experiencing what I call uncomfortable emotion, because there's no good emotion and there's no bad emotion. They're all just on a spectrum. It's just emotion. Yeah, it's emotion. Some are more comfortable, some are more pleasant, and others are incredibly uncomfortable and possibly destructive. So when you are experiencing a lot of emotion that is uncomfortable, it is a signpost. It's a guide that's telling you, you need to pay attention to this because there's something that's going on here that's making you uncomfortable and you need to address that. And I see the same with things that are happening in our body. It's our body's way of saying, hey, there's something going on here. We need to look at this and I'm going to get bigger and I'm going to get worse get your attention. And so often when I see that, mm -hmm. I link it with the chakra that the thing is happening to. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. All right. So it could be connected to a chakra or it could be connected to something else or it could just be this is where it's manifesting in the body. So when our bodies are in balance, it vibrates at a certain frequency. And when it is out of balance, typically it is vibrating at a lower or a slower frequency. So areas where things are vibrating at a slower frequency, it's more likely that something's going to start happening there because okay. it's not in it's more susceptible. Health. Exactly. So maybe you are just prone to having stuff going on in your stomach. Maybe there's a genetic thing that happens there. So mm -hmm. things like manifest in your stomach because that's where the energy is. They used lower. to call it round tree tummy. 
Do they? <laughs> yeah. The doctor, they'll say, yes, there are genetic markers. Like if you have cancer in your family, you might get cancer. Yeah. But what if you don't know you have cancer in your family? What if you're adopted? Right. How do you really, what, to, maybe you actually dodged every family bullet because you didn't know it was coming at you. Absolutely. That is you, you definitely bent down. a possibility. <laughs> yeah, you said, no, not, not in this lifetime. I'm going to come up with my own stuff. So I believe I have stomach troubles. I've always had stomach trouble, so therefore, mm. when I have something that's going on, they go, "Okay, let's hit her in the stomach because that's because a she pathway. knows that one. It's a pathway that's already developed. It's long developed, and it's an area where you pay attention." Mm. My my little dog Popcorn. When I was a kid, <laughs> everybody in the family we would sit in the family room and we would watch the TV and we would do it all together. If Popcorn was mad at us, she'd pee in front of the TV <gasps> because. That was where our attention was. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going to pay attention here. Yes. I'm going to put my now displeasure really right it's here. <laughs> and that's what your body does too. I believe that's how your intuition works as well, right? Like it gets your attention through the places that you pay attention to. You pay attention to the places where you've experienced pain or injury or you've had illness or disease. This is why things manifest in the same place. When I do readings, the stuff I've been looking at becomes part of my readings. Yes. They put it in context. Like when mm -hmm. I was, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit better on drag race. <laughs> so a little obsessed for a while there. I was constantly talking about drag queens in the middle of my readings. Yeah. And I'd be like, too much drag race. <laughs> <laughs> Because yep. that's where my brain was. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel so much less um, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, with everything that we've done, mm -hmm. so over time, do I have to do something? So immediately, like in the right now, mm -hmm. make sure you drink lots of water. Okay. And make sure that you're gentle with yourself and that you rest. Perfect. Glad you have your mug. Perfect. Tea. Excellent. Trick or treat. Very Halloween. <laughs> We're Very. So yeah, drink lots of water. And the reason for that is because even though we're working on the energetic level and it doesn't feel really big, we're mixing things up and things are ready to be released. So give your body the resources it needs to fully and completely release. It seems like water is the first thing the body goes, oh, I'm not giving you any of this yes. when you do stuff. Yeah. Water is your friend. Make sure water that you're drinking your plenty of water. Um, and be gentle with yourself. Those so I, d I shouldn't go and slap myself silly later. <laughs> I mean, whatever floats your boat, Bobby. I'm, I'm not here to judge. So, no, oh, don't do <laughs> yeah, don't do that. And so the other thing, the other thing that sometimes happens, particularly when we release emotions. Do people throw up? Sometimes. Okay, because I saw <laughs> that in my head. But that's actually, <laughs> but that's so funny because that's the analogy that I use. So they don't necessarily actually throw oh, up. I saw the picture first before you said it. I'm sorry. So, so when you eat something, you taste it on the way down. Oh. And sometimes. It's like detoxing. Sometimes when you throw it up, you taste it on the way back out again. Okay. Now. <laughs> all right. So are you. Wait, okay. Can you, you can do body code on somebody via FaceTime. Yeah. Via Zoom, via, yeah. via, 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 Zoom. via I can, things. I can do it while we're not even talking. I can do it via email. Yes, that's what I was going to oh, say. Yeah. So how do we close? Are we going to just, we're going to do high five. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, bye. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I mean, our last video, 21 people watched that. <laughs> oh my God. Do you want to do the muscle testing part? Is that like reflexes? Am I going to kick you? <laughs> I hope not. Are we recording? Right now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we are good. Okay. Yeah. And if you think that's not going to make it into the video, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. A little insane. Insane in the membrane. Good. Yes, it's a <laughs> it is. It's beautiful, and your rematch is correct. It does. 
Um, I'm a Moonstone girl. Hi there. I'm Bobby, and oh, I'm not Bobby. I'm Erin. <laughs> I think we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was gonna be Bobby this time. Okay, okay, okay. You be Bobby. I'll be Erin. Yeah. Yeah.